What's up, YouTube? Um, I'll tell you what I'm doing real quick is I'm changing out the uh, pinion seal on my 9 inch rear end because it's a leaking. Um, it's always been kind of wet, left oil on my uh, differential. I could always see it was wet down there, but I just noticed the other day that um, it puked all my differential fuel or fluid all over the ground in front of my house. So I'm going to go ahead and change out the seal. So I'll show you that in just a second. All right, here's the new seal right here. Like I said, this goes basically the input shaft to the differential called a pinion seal. And from AutoZone, the number is right there, 7044NA. All right, I'm gonna get to this as best as I can. Um, it is almost 9.30, so I'm gonna try not to wake up my neighbors. But, um, so as you can see, the big slimy mess down there uh, underneath. I have taken the drive shaft out, just loosened up the brackets, pulled it down out of the way, and then the nut that goes in the middle of the yoke here is an what is it, inch, and, uh, inch and a sixteenth. So there's the nut right there. I had to heat that sucker up to get it off. Um, my impact would not even break it loose. I ended up having to basically wedge a pipe right here and then get my half inch ratchet and then put another pipe on that for a handle to break it loose. So it finally came loose and I was able to spin it off. Now I'm in the process of getting, there's a washer inside there, pulling that washer out and then seeing where I gotta go from there. Basically pull the yoke out. So that's where I'm at right now. All right, here we go, magnet on a stick. And there it is. There's two of them, look at that. Uh, or it just has a line around it. Now you can see in there where it's splined onto the actual shaft. So, uh, next we'll be trying to work that off of there. All right, well here's what I didn't do. Um, so I watched a couple other videos on this thing um, as far as marking, and I got a foot, dang it, I got a moth on my shirt. Ah, get out of my shirt, stupid moth. Oh well. Anyway, uh, I did not draw, mark where this thing was, so the best I can tell is that nut is bottom out on uh, the threads there because as tough as it was to get to break that thing loose, um, there's no way I'd be able to crank that back down on there, anything past where it was. So, uh, I mean, it was probably, yeah, I mean, it was quite a few foot pounds, plus I had to heat it up. Um, but I went ahead and marked it anyway, to, so I put the yoke back on the right way when I take it off. Um, as far as just mark the bottom there on the nut, or on the, sh uh, yeah, on the uh, threaded part, I marked the nut, and then I marked the, uh, the yoke. So then I'll know exactly which position it goes back on. Uh, I'm getting ready to pull it off. Uh, I got a big puller here. Um, sorry, I don't have much room, but this is basically the puller that I'm using. Um, I'll show you in a minute how I rig this up. All right, there you go. So that's how I rigged it up. Uh, basically just put it behind the two tabs there on the corner. Um, like I said, this one doesn't bolt in to, uh, to the holes like uh, the other ones do, but this don't even have bolt holes. Um, it's just you, uh, like you bolts that go through with nuts on the back, so a little bit different than the other ones that are on there uh, as far as on YouTube. So I'm going to put this one on there um, and then uh, start cranking down on it and should be able to pop it off. Well, there it is. Finally got the yoke off. Um, my puller just about gave out on me, but uh, WD-40 sucks. Uh, switched over to garage door lubricant. Actually keeps his viscosity, so that uh, made everything slide right off. Worked really good. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty stinking grody. Um, and my wipe, my uh, sorry, my mark did wipe off of that shaft there. So I'm gonna have to, but I did mark it straight up and down. Um, so uh, I will remark it before I get too much farther. So. There it is. Uh, all I gotta do now is pry the uh, little old seal out. 
Okay, so as you can see, this is probably original seal. Now this one, the new one, has that little lip on the edge that sticks up, makes it really easy to pull prime out. This one does not. This is the edge of the housing, and this is the seal, and this is the seal. So basically what I have to do is trying to get right in that little edge right there and pop that sucker out or go in from the center and pry out the edge. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. Um, i got some angled pliers to try and pop it out. Uh, let's see how these work. Maybe not. Don't want to put a bunch of pressure on that bearing. Ooh, and I'm smacking my camera. Sorry. Sorry about that. Hmm. I don't know what that was moving around in there. Part of the race? Man, I don't know. Let me get two hands on this. Okay, as you can see, I got it. Um, basically, big screwdriver. Put up underneath it like that and just pry like in different angles. Um, once again, thank you Ford for putting that on there. That really helps not. Helps to be in the way. Um, so I got this nasty thing off and um, yeah, that could go in there. What is going on back here? Okay, some sort of washer thing. Yep. Um, just gonna leave that in place. The bearing looks to be in decent shape. I guess, I mean, there's no, there's no play in that whatsoever. That's pretty solid. So, I'm gonna clean that up, put the new seal in, and then it will be reassembly time. <sighs> Alright, there we go. <sighs> new seal is in. Last guy that I watched the video on said use a body hammer. So, guess what? Body hammer it was. Um, it was a little t tough to get that top edge, obviously, because that, whatever the heck that stupid bracket is in the way. Um, but it does have a bump stop on it, so I guess I'll just leave it. Um, man, I'll tell you what, the next time I do this, I'm jacking the back end of this thing up five more inches, because this is ridiculous. Um, I did back into the driveway, so the car was already on kind of a downward angle. And jacking the back up, back end up made it even more of an angle, so uh, I think next time probably pulled up the other way. Hopefully I won't have to do this for a while. Anyway, alright, so um, the yoke's going to go back in and uh, should seal it up. Now, on this, on the back of the yoke, there is a rubber seal in there. Now that seal has one spot where it's kind of hanging out. I don't know what that's supposed to do, but I'm going to throw it back together as is and uh, see if it holds. But, uh, yeah, so I'll throw it back together, clean it up, and should be good. Okay, well, just about got it back together. Um, ended up using the brass hammer, uh, that one right there, to uh, drive the yoke back in. Uh, went in pretty smooth, and then I was able to tighten it down. I uh, tightened it down to about three threads exposed. Um, that's where I had it before. I probably could have tightened it more, so it didn't really bottom out. So, but didn't want to overload it. Um, right now I'm just finishing putting the, the uh, little U uh, bolts back in on the uh, U joints. So I checked the caps, they're all good and greasy. Now I was looking and there is my tag. It was all covered in grease. I don't know if you even noticed it on the other videos, but um, so I looked at that and I see it has 325 gears, which is cool. I thought it only had like 3.0 and it has a 62, so I'm, I don't know if that means it's a 62 rear end. Uh, so, somebody else might know better than I do, but anyway, I'm going to bolt it back up. Um, I'm going to clean off all this crud and grime on there, and then uh, fill it back up, and then it should be good to go. Alright, time to take it for a test drive. Oh, brakes work good. Bit of a whine coming from this backside. Take the 
fluid was low, so the bearing was getting a little dry. Should be good. I put two full quarts in it. Top it off. Yeah, should be good.